Okay, I'm going to jump on in to Photoshop Beta. I'm going to generate an AI image in Photoshop Beta. In this video, I show you how easy it is to create AI art right inside Photoshop Beta. So here I am in Photoshop Beta, and I just simply go up to File, New, or as you can see on the right, Command N, and then I just need to choose Size. Let's see. Well, you can click on any size, and if it's not what you want, this is kind of what I want, but if it isn't, you can obviously type in your own pixel dimensions on the right. So I'm just going to say generative AI art in Photoshop. 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels. Maybe I'll make it 150. It's going to just be on social. Set to sRGB color profile. I just hit create creates it with a little black background and then I simply don't have to do anything else such as select the whole canvas I can just go up to the edit menu where you can see it says generate image and I've set it to command G so just generate image which then brings up this panel and then I've already created a prompt so photorealistic, highly detailed goddess jumping into the air, sharp focus made of wood. So kind of interesting. I want it to be art because I don't think it will come out well as a photo. And then under style for reference image, I do have a reference image. So once I click that, you have the icon or I just say choose image. I go to my today and then I'm going to choose this one jumping person woman and then for effects I'll worry about that later so I just want to start off with that and hit generate hopefully all the details I put in the prompt are enough to make it a creative image okay so it kind of took it literally and so it kind of reproduced my reference image instead of just the stylization or that pose so I'm going to do a command Z. I'm going to go back to command G and it brings up that again. And then I'm going to just type in that same prompt and then say art. And I'm not going to upload a reference image. I'm just going to hit generate. You can see the progress bar up top pretty fast. That's pretty cool, pretty detailed in the dress. So that, uh, I said made of wood, so it has that kind of wood thing. So I like that. And then uh, just for the sake of giving this, I'm gonna go to my actions, just say duplicate, just say uh, goddess made of wood duplicate that and then I'm just going to save that in this folder for now okay close that then I'm just going to do command Z to go back keep the same 2048 by 2048 document and I'm going to grab another prompt so I simply can just Either, once again, go to Edit, Generate Image, or you can set a keyboard shortcut, so just Command G, and then you can just put in Vintage Demon Warrior in Kirigami style illustration, say Art, Generate, see how creative this one is. It's progress bar up top, pretty fast. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so these are quite nice, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to choose. I like all three. But say I like this one. Just to uh, show you the options, you know, once I create an image like this, I can then go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and then the image pops up here. Zoom out just a little bit. First thing I can do is tweak the color. So I can make it more blue. Bring up the vibrance and the saturation a little bit. And I can tweak the light. I 
tonal correction, so a little bit of exposure, contrast. I think the exposure is a little heavy-handed, so I'm going to pull it back down to maybe 20, and then add a little bit of bump to the whites. And then bottom right here, if you turn that off, that's before, but yellow and muted. Now it's kind of vibrant. And then with this type of illustration, not sure this will do much, but if I go to Effects under Texture, if I pull that to the right, it gives it kind of a sharpening to some of the detailed areas. And I just hit OK. So it built, since it was a generative AI layer, it built its own smart filter when I went to Camera Raw Filter. <coughs> so I can turn that off, turn it on, and it has a built-in layer mask if I wanted to get rid of certain areas and bring back the original. So I like that. So I'm just going to, once again, go to my actions, just say duplicate, and just call this Demon Warrior. Checked duplicate merge layers only, so that's another way of saying it will be flattened. And then I'm just going to save it for now into my today folder. And then this, I'm just going to go back, Command Z a few times. I kind of like that one too, though, so maybe I'll duplicate that. And then I'm not even concerned with the title. I'm just going to say OK. And then as I go to save, I can just click on the previous one and then just make sure at the end of that title, I put it like a hyphen 2. So make sure you put number two so it doesn't copy over the first one. And then I just do Command-Z until I get back. And then that's another fun one here. So go to Edit, Generate Image, paste in my prompt, Cyborg Metallic Goddess made of gears with iron pieces, rusty material, shiny with shiny aluminum, hyper-realistic, high-definition, hit Art, no reference image. And then just for the sake of showing you, under effects, I can have all these effects. So I can choose more effects. So maybe I will look for maybe a grunge. Some other similar effect. Plenty to choose from here. So palette knife, paper mache, pointillism. Science fiction, that could be fun. And then uh, surrealism. Do I need both science fiction and surrealism? <laughs> I go to effects, materials, so many options. I think that should be interesting though. So I hit generate, the progress bar up top. You'll see on the properties panel, it's also a little spinning wheel showing that there's going to be three variations. Oh, that's pretty nice. That's one. That's two. That's three. Pretty cool. And then if I like one, as I've done before, I can just go to filter, camera raw. Just be aware that the camera raw filter at the top would take you back to the same settings you did previously. So you always want to go down here. So you're going into Camera Raw Filter Fresh. And then I zoom out a little bit. And in this case, I might move the temperature slider to the right to make it a bit warmer. And then Vibrance a little bit to the right. And Saturation. Well, Saturation maybe not so much. Maybe just a little bit, like two. And then for Light, I'm going to move the exposure. A little Contrast. Exposure is a little high, so bring it back down. Slider moves pretty fast. And then highlights pull down to bring back, tone down some of the highlights so not too blown out. Move the whites to the right. And for the shadows, I kind of want to make them a little bit darker for contrast. Yeah. So go down to this icon, click that's before, that's after. Kind of much warmer, kind of glowing. And then effects, move the texture slider to the right or sharpen details. Sometimes I like to see what dehaze does. So if I go to dehaze and go to the left, I'm kind of adding. If I go to the right, it makes it even kind of cleans up 
some of the hazy areas a bit more, maybe just a little bit. And then I might even go to detail and go to sharpening where I pull to the right about 35, holding the option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, move the masking slider to the right where you get this preview. White will be sharpened, black is being preserved. So I take it up to about 60, gives it just a little bit more sharpen, sharpness before, after. Hit OK. And that's a little quick tour of generating an AI image in Photoshop beta. Just like Adobe Firefly, but right in Photoshop beta.